Hello and welcome to this video in which I am going to show you how you can modify HP Elite Desk 800 G1 to have native NVMe support by modifying the BIOS. First of all, going to show you what kind of performance you can expect. And as you can see here, I've booted up a freshly installed Windows 10 onto the NVMe drive and it's booted in around 12 seconds. You will require some hardware to, put, to complete this upgrade. The first thing that you're going to need is an NVMe SSD like this one. I like the Samsung ones, but any one will do. These come with very useful data migration software if you're going to clone from an existing drive. Then you need a PCIe adapter like this one to mount the SSD in. And when you get it, you just insert it in at an angle like this, push it down a little bit and then screw it into place. And that is ready to use. So before I put that into the machine, I will show you how to modify the BIOS so that it can support this natively as a boot device. Right, so before I uh, modify the hardware and add the NVMe drive into the machine, I am going to modify the BIOS um, and this is how you do it. So the first thing to say is that there is a blog post, which I will link in the description, which um, goes through the entire process. And we've already gone past the required hardware. And so we move on to this section here and store the required drivers and software. So the first thing we need is these Intel management components, um, which we can get from the HP website. So I'll download those now and just run the installer. Okay, now that that is installed, let's just go back to the blog post. We will download these Intel Management System Engine tools. These are coming straight from my blog. And I'm just going to open that zip file. And I'm going to take that folder that's in here. I'm just going to put it on the root of the C drive. I already had it there, but you get the idea. And we also need this NVMe driver, which I'm going to download. And then you need UF, UEFI tool, um, which you can download from here. So the next step is you need to put the machine to service mode. Now, I just want to say before we go ahead that we are going to be modifying the BIOS of the machine. So it does carry some risk. There is warning on the blog post. If you proceed beyond this point, um, that is down to you. It is very easy and I haven't had any problems. That's not to say that you won't. So after you've got the Intel management engine components installed and the other software downloaded, you need to shut down the machine. And what we're going to do is move a jumper. Um, if, you've, if you've got a spare jumper, we are going to put a jumper on these pins here in between the power supply and the PCI port. Um, and if you've got, don't have a spare jumper, you can borrow one from the password pins here. Um, so I'm going to shut the machine down now and do that. And I'm going to install the NVMe drive at the same time. So I'm just going to shut down now and then we'll resume from the view of the machine. Okay, so I've got the machine shut down now. And the first thing I'm going to do is pull out the mains and take the lid off. Now, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but the little pins that we're after are just down here next to the PCI slot, in between the PCI slot and the power supply. Now, I've got one of these motherboard jumpers spare. If you don't have one, let me see if I can make that focus. 
If you don't have one, there is one down here next to the SATA ports on the password pins and you can just borrow that one and put it over here onto this FDO slot. So I'll stick it in the FDO now. It's not a very big. There we are, so that's on there now. And while I'm here, I'm just gonna put the NVMe SSD in as well, even though we haven't done the BIOS modification yet. There we go. And I'm just gonna stick the case back, the lid back on for now, even though we will be coming back in here to take that pin off again. Right, now let's boot it up again. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is go back to this blog post. <clears throat> That's all done. Okay, so we're now getting into modifying the actual BIOS. So the first thing that we need to do is open a command prompt as an administrator. Let's just make that text a little bit bigger so it's easy for you to see. Okay, so I am going to cd into here. And then I'm going to use this command, just copy that. And that backs up the region of the BIOS that is writable. You'll notice that it's only 10 meg, not the full 16. And that's now backed up. And now I need to open UEFI tool. Let's go into here. I'm going to open that backup image. There's my backup.bin. So if I expand out this UEFI image and then open out the first section, and I go right to the bottom of this first section until I see this CSP lib DXE. And I right click and do insert after. And I go down to my downloads and I've got this MVME Express DXE small. And I'll just put that there and then I'll say file, save image. And I'm gonna call this MVME.bin. You can open the reconstructed file to make sure that it's gone in. Let's just have a look. Yeah, and there's our NVMe driver. So I can close this now. I've still got my command prompt open. Let's go back to the blog post. Okay, so now we are going to, this is the point at which we're actually going to write the BIOS back. Um, so this is the first point in which we're actually changing anything on the machine. So I'm gonna come into here and just paste that command. And that is now writing the BIOS with the MVME driver in it back to the machine. So at this point now, our machine does have NVME support. And now you have got some choices to make. I'm not going to do this step because as you can see in the video, I've just installed the NVMe drive. So you can either now freshly install your operating system, whether that's Windows 10 or something else is up to you. Um, but you must, if you want to boot from an NVMe drive, you must have your UEFI boot mode enabled and it must be set to actually boot from UEFI. I disabled all the legacy options on on my machine. Now if you want to keep your existing installation you will have to make sure that um, first of all you migrate and things on here to your new SSD and if this isn't a GPT star partition which mine is 
but if yours is MBR, then you'll need to migrate it over and then convert it to MBR, which is, uh, to GPT, which you can do on the command line. It's out of the scope of this, but um, what I will do is just go and grab that Samsung data migration software. Going to install that quickly. Okay, so that's installed now, I'll run it. Um, it's been a while since I used this. Let's go to data migration. Oh, okay, so I need to pick my Intel SSD, which is already there, and this is my Samsung Evo. I'll go to data migration. I'll pick my new Samsung drive. And I'll just press start. Okay, so now the actual migration is beginning. And because I'm going from a SATA SSD to the NVMe SSD, it is going quite quickly. Okay, so that is now done. Obviously it only took two and a half minutes on this machine, but it was coming from quite a small source drive. If you're coming from a mechanical hard drive, this will take a lot longer. And now the machine is going to shut down automatically. And what I will do is remove the SATA drive and boot straight from the NVMe. And I'm also going to remove that um, jumper from the FDO pin. Okay, so I'm going to remove the FDO motherboard pin and I'm going to take the SATA SSD off and just leave behind the NVMe drive. You can also use an adapter like this one which has an NVMe drive at the bottom and a SATA SSD at the top and then you can just go with a short SATA cable from here to one of the SATA ports if you want some extra storage these are quite good. And that is it. Now I can put the case back on and boot it up with the NVMe. So I'm now booted back up into the NVMe drive. I'll just give you a quick idea of how fast it is. I'll just run this crystal disk mark test. So you can see from the results of the crystal disk mark test that the drive access speeds are incredibly quick, even compared to a SATA SSD. So it's well worth um, doing the upgrade. You can also, if you've got a SATA SSD or a mechanical hard drive, you can keep that in the machine, no problem, but you'll get the maximum benefit from booting from your NVMe drive and keeping your operating system there. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you try it and how you get on and what sort of results you get. See you in the next one.